This video will provide you with two kinds of information. On one side, you'll learn how to counter Loki. On the other side, you'll learn how an experienced Loki player can counter some of those steps himself. You have to understand that Loki requires counterplay, Loki requires map awareness, and Loki requires team play. Loki in total requires you to adapt to the situation of having a Loki on the enemy team. And this implies that there will probably be changes to your playstyle, maybe your build, maybe some other things. You have to accept this. It is simply the only way you can properly counter a Loki, and that's what people hate so much about him. So in the end, try to see playing against Loki as kind of a lesson. And talking about lessons, let's quickly go over the points that we're gonna cover here. We're gonna cover sound play, choice of relics, positioning, abusing the decoy and weak early, warding, map awareness, while Loki is split pushing, counter building and direct counter picks, if you don't see any other way anymore. The first point is extremely simple. Sound play literally means turning up your speakers. Maybe turn up the in-game volume as well if you have that turned down, and it will help you playing against Loki. How does it help? Whenever Loki goes into stealth, you will hear his footsteps. The sound of his footsteps will give you an idea of where he's positioned, even in stealth, and you can actually follow him. You don't need high-level headphones in order to do so, even your normal speakers will allow you to have a decent idea of where he's moving. Additionally, if the Loki player decides to pop his aim strike early, for example before going into lane, you will be able to hear it better. Moving on to point two, choice of relics. The choice of relics depends on the character you're playing. If you're playing a squishy mage, for example in mid lane, you should probably get Aegis, or Sanctuary as it's called these days. You can even pop Aegis after getting ulted and still avoid a lot of his follow-up damage. If you're however a frontliner, and you don't necessarily need the Aegis, you're better off getting Teleport. At least one, if not two players on your team should have Teleport available if there's a Loki on the enemy team. Why? Because Loki likes split pushing. The moment you see Loki split pushing, you want to have someone with Teleport who can just go over there and stop him from it. Therefore, ideally the character that has Teleport should also be one that is able to deal enough damage to Loki or control him in any other way so he can't keep pushing. As a secondary relic, I usually recommend Purification, also known as Beads. This item gives you a lot against a lot of characters and it helps against Loki's stun, allowing you to avoid some of the follow-up damage, especially if you have an escape or you combine it with Aegis, aka Sanctuary. So, to sum it up, squishies get Sanctuary and Purification, not so squishy characters get Teleport. If your jungler is the tanky one, then let him get Teleport. There's no harm in getting it on characters that usually don't get it, as long as anyone can keep Loki from spit pushing reliably. And make sure to not use the teleport offensively in other situations too much, because that will give him windows to split push. Point 3. Positioning. Positioning is extremely important against Loki. What do I mean by positioning in this particular case? Especially what you do against him in lane. One of the biggest mistakes you can do against the Loki is get bored and try to dive him under tower. I do that sometimes. It's just not good. What will happen if you do it is Loki will try and ult you, stun you under tower and make sure that the tower deals so much damage to you that you at least have to back out if not die. At the same time, don't back under your own tower. Go behind the tower, ideally out of the range of his abilities and his vision, just so you can't get ulted while backing. This is one of the easiest opportunities for Loki to kill you. You're already in the shopping window and he just jumps on you. Same goes for lazy backing in general in a game against a Loki. Lazy backing means you're not backing in a safe spot but somewhere close to the enemy just because it's more convenient and don't have to walk back. Lokis thrive of this. Lazy backing somewhere in the jungle is exactly what gets you killed against a Loki. Don't do it. Find a safe spot behind a tower so you can be safe and sure that if you get attacked you either get out or somebody else will even help you and maybe get a kill on Loki. All of the points mentioned so far are things Loki players cannot do anything against other than trying to play smarter than you, for example by baiting out your relics. Now for the fun stuff, abusing the decoy and weak early. Loki needs his decoy for many things. He uses it to clear, to block off escapes and to block off abilities against him. However, this can be used to your advantage. In the early levels, the decoy doesn't really deal that much damage, but Loki will use it to clear regardless. What you can do to completely stop him from having any potential in the lane is simply standing in the decoy. You should be a little bit tanky for this and have some health pods in the ideal scenario. 
But what will happen is you will take a slight amount of damage and at the same time Loki will aggro all the enemy minions. Meaning all the archers will shoot him if he's anywhere nearby making him take a lot more damage. Make sure to only use this on lower levels because on higher levels the decoy deals decent amounts of damage. At the same time the decoy can be used as a damaging tool for you. This only works for certain characters, I don't have a comprehensive list, but I can tell you for sure that you can bounce Naja's ring toss off the decoy. So if Loki tries to get away, you just bounce it on the decoy and it will hit Loki and bounce back potentially. Specifically addressing the weak early here, you have to realize that Loki's level 1 is one of the weakest in the game. He usually levels the decoy, meaning he has low damage against anything but minions. This means that invades against Loki are extremely potent. Taking away his blue buff early means he probably has to back at some point because he's quite mana hungry and he has no way to defend that stupid buff. So take that from him in the beginning and you will have an easy time throughout most of the early game. What can Loki players do against it? Ward. If you ward up around the area of the buff, it would be much less likely for you to get invaded and if you get invaded you will know and you can back out in time. Still better not having a blue buff as Loki than the enemy having your blue buff. Speaking about wards, next point is warding. But Duke, wards don't show Loki in stealth. That is correct. Still, warding is extremely effective against Loki. When Loki rotates into a lane, he will usually use his stealth shortly before aggressing on you. Meaning if the wards are far out, they will catch him before he is in stealth and he will know when he's coming. I have an example right here where you can see how we see Loki rotating in. We have just finished an objective and we see Loki rotating in from the right. I immediately back out as I'm low health, whereas Tyr moves towards Loki, keeping him from aggressing on anyone or split pushing. He catches him off guard and Loki's whole rotation was for nothing. If we didn't have that ward there, I might have not backed out and just get one shot by Loki. The next topic pretty much goes hand in hand with warding. Map awareness. Usually you pay attention to your lane opponent and maybe the mid lane that might rotate onto you if you're in the duo for example or the solo. But with Loki around you have to keep an eye on him. Whenever you look at your minimap check where Loki is. This is annoying, same as soundplay, but there's pretty much no way around it. See where he is, see what he might be up to, check where you've seen him last and you have a much better potential to counter him before he even gets to a point he wants to be. As you can see in this very example, I fucked up with exactly that here. I ignored the Loki who was going to split push on right because I didn't check my minimap in the very moment that I could have seen him and in the end it pretty much lost us the tower. As you've seen some fun split pushing right there, let's talk about what you should do while Loki is split pushing. You have to make a decision. Do you have anyone with teleport? Get that guy to go over there and let him stop Loki from split pushing. Do you need everyone in a team fight? Don't teleport over there, but get that team fight done. The moment Loki split pushes, you're in a 4v5. You should capitalize on that. You should try and fight the enemy. Just try and take them down as a whole. If you kill four people, there's not much Loki can do. He cannot defend very well. He can maybe push your Phoenix. You can maybe end game at the same time. Loki can never defend or take down a titan on his own unless you play incredibly bad. Therefore, you have to make this decision fast. If you have a good guard to stop him and he has teleport, there's no reason not to do it if you don't need that guard in a teamfight very much. But if you don't, then your best bet is to simply go for the enemy team, kill them and try to finish the game based on that. If you can't kill the enemy team 4v5, you're probably not gonna win anyways. The Loki player himself then has to make a decision. Does he keep trying to split push? Will it work for him? If not, does he actually help in the team fights? This may be necessary sometimes. At the same time, it puts Loki's team at a disadvantage as Loki is not a great team fighter. Point 7. Counter building. Loki himself doesn't need to counter build much. He goes for a standard build every time. Loki's build is usually a mix of damage, penetration, cooldown reduction and some occasional crit in there as last item. In the beginning he will mostly have cooldown reduction, damage and a little bit of flat penetration but not much. This means he will deal an extraordinary amount of damage against squishies, not so much against tankier targets. If you're a solo laner, you're a warrior, you're tanky, just go for Breastplate of Valor. You will get Bulwark of Hope eventually to have some extra health to completely withstand his burst, but that's pretty much all you need. You can go Hide of the Nemean Lion or Midgardian Male on top of that, but usually 
Loki will not try to focus you in later stages of the game, and if he does, he will still have a limited amount of damage against you. As a mid laner, make a decision. Can you afford to not deal that much damage early and can you still clear effectively? Are you, for example, an Isis? Breastplate of Valor for you as well. Like I said, early on, he only has a little bit of flat penetration and having physical protection against that helps a great amount. If you really need the magical damage early or you want to stack, look at Uncommon Sash. Every item you can build out of Uncommon Sash, except for Rod of Asclepius, is pretty much worth it for you. If you want to have the stacks and you want to have the max power you can get while building a little bit tanky, go for Warlock Sash. In this case, you should rush it after Boots, as it takes a long time to finish and you're gonna be weak early. You're gonna be at risk not only from Loki, but the mid laning mage as well. It's gonna pay off in the later stages of the game though. If you want to have the quick and dirty way, you build Breastplate of Valor first and go for Ethereal stuff or Gem of Isolation after. Gem of Isolation doesn't provide you with that much health, so be careful with this, but it can work especially because you can zone Loki off effectively as well. As a jungler, Breastplate of Valor should be fine for almost all characters. You don't really need anything else. As a guardian, same. Don't even bother with it, you have enough defenses to not get focused by Loki. As a hunter, or any hyper carry guard in the game, for example Kali or Bakasura, you have a bit of a problem. You can't really afford to go into physical defense or health much because it basically ruins your role. You will have to shut down Loki before he shuts you down. One thing that can greatly help with this is Iqvale. Iqvale allows you to steal power from Loki, have penetration against him, meaning you deal more damage automatically, and use that power against him. It's not an ideal choice and you should definitely pair it with a Sanctuary, but it's the best bet you have when playing a carry. Also, a meditation on your Guardian, for example, can help you a lot. If all of that doesn't help you and you just need that straight up counter pick against Loki, here are some guards that can work very well. These are by far not all counter picks, especially since any bursty character can counter Loki with pure burst the same way Loki counters them in a way. But these guards have particular perks in their kits that allow them to perform well against Loki. Arachne. Arachne has much stronger boxing than Loki. She has a self heal, so she won't get bursted, and her spiders follow Loki in stealth. Ares. Ares can easily prevent Loki from getting away simply by ulting him. He also has high damage while being tanky, which is extremely problematic for Loki. Freya. Freya can banish Loki's decoy in lane, meaning that he has no way to clear early, has to walk into the minions and has to take the risk of getting hit by Freya all the time. However, Loki still has good damage against Freya, so keep that in mind. Fenrir. Fenrir has an extremely strong early where he can just bully Loki out of lane and often has kill potential on him. Additionally, Fenrir usually benefits from building a little bit of protection, just enough protection to not get shut down by Loki and still box him. Hou Yi. Hou Yi is a mark that reveals stealth. Loki hates that. Nothing more to say about it. He can still get one shots, but this mark is just terrible for Loki. Janus and Jing Wei. Both of them don't directly counter him in a fight, but they have very strong capabilities of preventing split push. Janus does so with his ultimate, while Jing Wei can fly back to lane without using teleport. Naja. Naja can, as mentioned before, bounce his ring toss off the decoy in order to deal more damage to Loki, but he also has extremely high burst and his ultimate can often basically one-shot a Loki and shut him down before he can be relevant in any way. All warriors, because warriors are too tanky for Loki to deal with them, but especially Osiris. Osiris on top of that has higher damage than other warriors, meaning he can bully him better, and he has his three that shows where Loki is in stealth unless Loki walks out of the three. Last but not least, Sean Kui. Sean Kui has a kit that is geared towards hitting Loki while he's in stealth. On top of that, Sean Kui is an extremely tanky mage, and that's something Loki really struggles with. As I said, there are more, but this should give you a decent idea. I hope this helps you in your game. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, Duke Sloth out. Little last minute addition, if Loki proxy farms, so he farms the minions from behind your tower, and your team can't shut him down, then just do the same. This will force his team to rotate, or you will be stuck in exactly the same situation.